<laughs> Star Wars Outlaws is Ubisoft's breakup letter to fans. I'm talking it's you not me type of vibes. But for some reason the fans just don't want to hear it. In spite of the number of times whereby they have been used and abused by Ubisoft, fans keep running back to that toxic relationship every single time Ubisoft says I've changed. I need another chance. <laughs> I mean guys, the way that Ubisoft has been insulting their fans, they literally told you guys that they want you to be comfortable with not owning your games. And then what did they do after that? They gave you a black samurai. And then what did they do on top of that? They made the samurais gay. And I don't know if you guys have seen the protagonist of Star Wars Outlaws, Kavis, interacting in her cutscenes. The stuff of nightmares. Yeah, he wouldn't. But he told me you could mod my speeder. Hey yo, what the fuck? And then of course the icing on the cake. Ubisoft literally comes to you guys and says, Baby, I want to do something really special for you. What is it? Give me $110 and I'll give you early access. Oh my god, Ubi, stop! You're being for real, right? You're not gonna make me a beta tester like your other hoes, right? Baby, look at me. You are not, never will be a beta tester, alright? Now come over here and get the sausage. <laughs> A few moments later. Biggest games in gaming history, Star Wars Outlaws. And what they just did to their most loyal players would have me calling for a refund. Ubisoft was charging $130, which gave players the season pass, two special bundles, a digital art book, and most importantly, three days early access. Now I got to play the game early and there were definitely some things that need to be fixed before release. So what did Ubisoft do? They pushed out a day one patch, just like a lot of other games do. But in order for the patch to work, Ubisoft has asked all players to start with new saves. Meaning all of the progress that was made in the three day early access window has been wiped away. And if those players choose not to update their game or continue on their current playthrough, developers say that they will unfortunately face issues and progress blockers. The pricing structure for this game was already a huge talking point, but now this just sends it over the top. <laughs> All I gotta say is, I love my boss battles, but I'm glad that this isn't my boss battle. <laughs> to this day! To this day! Sensational. Orcs are now depicted as loving husbands and protective fathers who don't want to go to war. What even is this show? I saw this. This is a real scene in an unfortunately very real show. We are safe here. We have a home. Must we go to war again? Trust me, my son, when I tell you that we will never truly be safe until we've made certain Sauron is no more. As you will it, Lord Father. Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. Tolkien wrote the orcs as a malevolent goblin race, males only, holy evil. Woke shitlib writers in 2024 want you to feel bad for them, though. I'm gonna be totally honest, I agree with them. Remember what I said before about how I was concerned about that War of the Rohirrim anime not being able to adhere to the virtue of Tolkien and, like, the inherent vote virtue of his work? I feel like this is another great example of that. It's another example of a person who thinks that they understand the world better than, like, because you have to remember, like, Tolkien was a fucking soldier in World War One, and these people think that they can understand morality and add a shade of it that Tolkien couldn't see in, in his own life. So guys, I'm no expert when it comes to Lord of the Rings, but I know who is. Let's see what the fans have to say about this. Holly Clown said, I love how they depict orc men as more loving and protective fathers than they do human men in modern media. Damn! We literally have to be otherworldly monsters for us to get the recognition and respect we deserve. This comment is one of the best ones. Everywhere you look, there are more screenwriters and producers eager to take great stories and make them their own. 
it does not seem to matter whether the source material was written by Stan Lee, Charles Dickens, Ian Fleming, Roald Dahl, Ursula K, J.R.R. Tolkien, Mark Twain, Raymond Chandler, Jane Austen. No matter how major a writer it is, no matter how great the book, there always seems to be someone on hand who thinks he can do better, eager to take the story and improve on it. The book is the book. The film is the film, they will tell you. As if they're saying something profound. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> Whatever you find, even the dog, should it please you. Hey, yo! What do you mean by that? What game is this, bro? <laughs> I know what you're doing. Ain't no one around here, my dude. Wait, yo, that's crazy. Exposed himself in 5K, dude. That's nuts, my dude. Stop avoiding the work that you know you need to do, and stop running from the problems that you know you need to solve. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter if the world is crumbling around you. It doesn't matter if it's cold outside and the rain is lashing down. The thing you're hiding from won't just disappear. So turn and face it. Do it tired. Do it when nobody else would. Do it cold. Do it when you feel alone and when you don't. The longer you wait, the farther you run. And the bigger the monster gets. And so returning to Concord again, we saw journalists the other day saying that gamers should give Concord a chance. Of course, that didn't do anything except end up getting them more ridicule. And now another journalist at a different outlet is attempting to defend Concord too. That brings us over to PC Gamer, where they write, The eagerness to grave dance on unpopular games has become a bad habit. So first of all, that's like a false premise. People are not mocking Concord because it's an unpopular game. And for that matter, there's plenty of games that are not well known, aka not popular, I suppose, as this journalist puts it, that no one's mocking. No, the fact of the matter is that Concord is another AAA game in an industry where AAA games have constantly been taking advantage of the players, and seeing it flop is something that people are understandably going to find rather amusing. You know, the unfortunate thing about what happened with Concord is that the PS5 experienced another price hike in Japan so that they make up for the $200 million loss that was Concord. This is my wine glass toasting to yet another flop and many more to come from this woke gaming industry. Yes, cheers, 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 cheers. cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys be there for me if I was going through something? No. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> I hope it sucks whatever wow. you're going through. I hope it sucks. What the fuck? <laughs> I hope it emotionally scars you for the rest of your life. <laughs> I hope you reach out to me so I can ignore you. <laughs> I can't wait to go to your funeral knowing that I could have changed that outcome. <laughs> <laughs> he called. Hell nah. I think we on the wrong side of the town. What? <laughs> we on the wrong side of the town. I'm not a hater. I'm a racist. I don't hate anybody because of what they are like. That's not kind or Christian. I hate people because of the way they look. Anyway, I can't believe why they made this game in the first place. But we have a trick up our sleeve, kid. Let's trigger ourselves. We can use trigger to increase attack power against robots. Just a pure failure. We've learned how to cancel someone. Cancel will allow us to isolate people from their friends and compatriots in battle. You've been canceled. A game made for activists by activists. The past games that were made by activists did not have this level of blatancy. I don't know what to say. I am, I'm triggered. 
<laughs> I don't know what to say. And then apparently in other news, the Dustborn developers, they, they brought a statement on their Twitter. Apparently they were crying that they were getting hate and abuse. So let's take a look at that. But now they're releasing this long post to their community. It says, since we first announced Dustborn, we've read your comments and listened to your feedback, hopes, and wishes for the game. Over the past four years, our team has poured their hearts into telling a story that's deeply meaningful to us, a story about the power of words, about building a world where everyone can feel safe. Disgusting shit. About love, friendships, and robots, of course. We expected Dustborn to spark conversation and debate and looked forward to engaging with our players in a positive and constructive fashion. Unfortunately, that conversation has been drowned out by a tidal wave of hate and abuse for- Whether it's media, gaming, or movies, every time they're taking L's, they're always coming out here talking about the fans are toxic. They are the reason as to why this thing didn't even make it in the first place. And it's like, when was the last time we heard a developer or anybody in the industry? They come out saying, you know what guys, we put our hearts and souls into this product, but unfortunately it was not up to standard. We are terribly sorry and we'll try to do better next time. And just leave it at that. Not a million years. Wait, what the f this man is Batman? Hold on, he's Batman, y'all. Oh shit! Oh, give me my shot, give me my shot, give me my shot. <laughs> this guy swears he's f***ing Batman. <laughs> okay, okay, okay! <laughs> Hold on, we might actually beat him for a try. We might actually be in first try. Hold on, because I don't know why. Unseen attacking from a distance. There are rules. I was wrong thinking you worthy of that armor. You are my instructor and my commander. Don't confuse that with being my superior. Every single person seems to be saying the same thing that Sarix and Sek look, look as if they just came out of Wakanda and it's hard to argue with that. This is where my gripe is. Why make them female though? I get that someone can say that now nah, but it's an alternate universe you know? But then what I'm trying to say is even if it's an alternate universe they didn't gender swap Scorpion. They didn't gender swap Sub-Zero. Why would you gender swap Sector and Cyrax? Because they had a pretty good backstory if you think about it. That the cyber initiative was the only way to keep the clan alive. So then the question is how can you make that better? If it ain't broke don't fix it. But then how does you gender swapping these established characters making them female. How does that make their origins or their story better than what we had before? Stop it. Get some help. Thank you, you awesome, fantastic people for tuning in and for uh, liking and subscribing. Remember, stay frosty and VWIW. Vote with your wallet.